Okay, so today I'm going to introduce uh, some topics I am interested in, so related to uh, discrete spectrum. So first, let's introduce uh, discrete spectrum. So F is a number field, uh, is a uh, values, and the G is uh, quasi-split classic groups. And then we introdu introduce this quotient space, uh, which has finite volume with respect to Tamagawa measure. So one can consider the square integral functions on this quotient space. Um, so this L2 space is a GA module by right translation. If we put all the irreducible or GA sub modules together, so that denoted by L2D, that is a discrete spectrum G. So inside the discrete spectrum, there are some special functions called cuspidal. Uh, if all the constant terms are zero, so this is just a delic uh, uh, setting the cuspidality, like the modular forms. So the N is just the, the uh, unit radical of any uh, proper parabolic subgroups. If we put uh, L to C, that's all the cuspidal functions. So this is called the cuspidal spectrum. So the orthogonal complement of the cuspidal spectrum in L to D uh, denoted by L to R. So by the theory of uh, the series of Langland, uh, so this L to R space consists of residues of SNS series, uh, which is called a uh, residual spectrum. So for a long time, understanding that discrete spectrum is uh, one of the main theme uh, in the theory of automatic forms. So first, let's see uh, some classification result. So for GLN, uh, so by the work of Jacquet and uh, Magellan Wazabri, so the discrete spectrum of GLN consists of representations like this, third tau B. If B is one, B is just some integers, okay? So uh, B is some divisor of N. If B is one, they just the tau, just cuspid representation. If B bigger than one, this is called Spe representation, just is a residual representation. For quasi split classic groups, uh, the classification is, uh, is done by author for uh, symplectic and orthogonal groups, and then extending the to unity groups by mock. So let's uh, take symplectic groups, for example, uh, see this classification. So it says uh, the discrete spectrum uh, can be decomposed into uh, some packet, which are parameterized by this other parameter. And for, for uh, representation in each packet, the multiplicity is one. These other parameters uh, have the form, is, uh, consists of uh, simple other parameters. So psi i have the form tau i b i, pi y is different. And so tau i just cuspid representation of GLAI, and bi just some positive integers. Satisfy the condition, the summation of ai times bi is 2 plus 1. And the reason for that is the dual group of symplectic group is uh, SO2 plus 1c. So each psi i has to satisfy some additional condition that is orthogonal type, namely this parity condition. So if bi is even, then tau i is uh, of symplectic type, uh, namely the uh, x to square function has a pole at s equals 1. If bi is odd, then tau i is orthogonal type. Symmetric square has a pole. So one way to understand that this, this, decom uh, this decomposition is, uh, so this whole packet, so given as a parameter, this whole packet is endoscopic lifting to one representation of GL, GL2 plus 1. Uh, that's a spherical sum like this. So notice that you see this uh, dual group is, uh, has a natural embedding in the GL2 plus 1. See, that's a dual group of GL, GL2 plus 1. Okay, so this is, this is endoscopic lifting. Okay, so uh, uh, we want to understand better each packet. So the two we're going to use is a Fourier coefficient of homoid forms. So let's uh, see how to obtain Fourier coefficient. So in the case of GLN, so usually the Fourier coefficient is defined on UN, the, the, upper, tri the upper triangular matrix. So uh, which is not abelian if n is uh, uh, big or equal to three. So uh, the idea of Shalik and Pietes Shapiro is so this UN has some abelian column. So one can take for expansion column by column. And in this way, they prove that it's cuspid uh, automorphic representation of GLN are generic. So namely have uh, some non-zero Whittaker coefficient. 
But for groups other than GLN, uh, there are no such nice for expansion. So uh, one need to uh, uh, introduce some other way of uh, defining for a coefficient. So in general, one can define for coefficient from a uh, Newton orbit. So in this way, we can measure the size of a coefficient using the um, uh, size of orbits. So let's introduce this notation. And pi, just all orbits support pi. And uh, that's maximal orbit inside. For quasi-split classic groups, the Newton orbits are parameterized by some uh, combinatorial data, some partitions, and some quadriforms. So if we just pick up the partition information and introduce p pi and uh, p, the maximal partitions, so we're corresponding to this n pi. So this sets uh, a very important uh, invariance of pi. OK, so, um, so given the pi in a packet, it, it has other parameters, and it has this, this invariance. So um, one wants to know the relation between them. So namely, uh, given other packet, we want to know the free coefficient of uh, members inside. OK. So first, Shahidi has this conjecture. If the other parameter, uh, all the b is a 1, that's called generic other parameter, then there is a pi, which is generic. Actually, this pi is cuspid. So uh, has non-zero weta for coefficient corresponding to regular orbit and maximal partitions. This has been proved by, uh, uh, for quasi-split classic groups uh, by uh, ginsburg soder using the theory of, of automorphic descent. So given a general uh, as a parameter, John has a conductor, which generalizes Shahidi's conductor, namely, you can find a partition, which is dependent on other parameters, such that so this partition is an upper bound, if we consider a dominant order for p m pi, for any pi in this packet. And you can find one such that this p, p psi can be achieved. So known cases, uh, if we take sympathetic groups, they join with John. And uh, so uh, one can show that, we can show that this p psi is actually upper bound, but with respect to dictionary order, upper bound. This is uh, a weaker result. The second one is uh, uh, corresponding to this part two. Namely, you see, for this uh, parameter of the form like this, so there is a generic part, a non-generic part. So one step beyond generic. So there exists pi such that uh, this upper bound can be achieved. So the other cases of this uh, conjecture is work in progress. OK, so uh, if you want to know the free coefficient of, of some specific member in the packet, you have to really construct it before calculate before calculation. So this construction of members uh, in, as a packet is always interesting, has a long history. So I just uh, mentioned some of them here. So first, the construction of residual pretensions uh, uh, for classic groups. So McGlenn considered the problem that, so whether there is a residual pretension ex existence of, uh, in, the, in the packet. She made some local and global conjectures. And John with John, uh, John and we calculate the poles of some SNN series and obtain uh, some residual representation. So uh, a more interesting thing, question is a construction of cuspid representation seems. Uh, so Piatic Sapiro and Sordi consider the group of GSP4. So they really construct all cuspid representations in the non-generic packet. So you didn't see that correspondence. And John, John, they, they considered the, the uh, construction of cuspid representation in the generic packet using basic for, for coefficient. And in general, it is expected that the generic packet only consider only contains cuspid representations. So John uh, uh, proposed some uh, framework which may give uh, constructions of pi in general. Topic is about relations of, between packets of different groups. The automorphic descent produces some map like this. Some repetition of uh, sympathetic groups, you can uh, apply the descent, you get some repetition of some uh, 
double cover. Because it's, uh, in some step, you have to integrate against the theta series. So that's good to cover. And they have some representation of also auto orthogonal group. We can get some representation of even orthogonal, like this. So from here, from these maps, one can uh, one may uh, wonder uh, what there's some relation between the packets of these groups. So this is a, a result of Ginzburg Jiang surgery. They consider these two groups, and they get this correspondence. So this union consists of all cosmic representations in that packet. And uh, so these are cosmic representations in that temper packet, a generic packet of double cover. To prove that this is really a map, namely, take some irreducible representation here, you really get one irreducible representation. Irreducibility is, is always hard. OK, so uh, then I extend this to higher rank cases, get this similar thing. The union is uh, all cosmic representation in some packet. And this given by descent. And there are, there are other similar this correspondence for other groups. OK, the last topic I want to uh, talk about is uh, non cosmodality of uh, some packet. So first, Piatesic Shapiro and the Surdi uh, on SP, GSP4, they, uh, they found that there exist uh, some other parameters uh, such that there are no cosmodality inside. And recently, uh, Paniagua Tabuda so, uh, showed that for split SO4N, for this other parameter, there are no cosmodality inside using the using trace formula. And this result can be proved, uh, can be reproduced using, using for a coefficient of morphons. Recently, we found that uh, if we take f, which is totally imaginary, then there exist many other parameters of sympathetic groups, such that there are no cusp inside. So here, we put all the sympathetic groups together, so vary the rank. So um, let me show you one example. So f is Gaussian field. If we take this as a parameter, you see 1, b1, tau b2. So by the parity condition, so this b1 has to be odd. This b2 has to be even, since we take tau is a uh, cusp definition of gl2 of sympathetic type. OK, so uh, if we vary the, the b1, b2, so this, is, uh, this really uh, give us some lattice point in the first quadrant. So then the result is, so this, all these packets may contain cosmic representation only when b1, b2 are like this. So there are indeed many uh, packets has no cosmic inside. So we, uh, we have the assumption that f is totally imaginary. So really the fact we reduce to is um, a simple factor that is over f, uh, any non-degenerate could form of dimension big or equal than 5 is isotropic. It's just this fact. So from this example, one can see that the uh, at least over, OK, the automotive form is over qi really different with automotive forms with over q. Well, since if they take the q, uh, it is expected that if, say, b1 is 1, there are many, there are, there are cuspidals inside. That's work of Aikida. Okay. In general, if b1 is large, then, then they, they are expected that, well, people expected that there are no cuspid inside. But if B1 is small, B2 is large, then uh, expect the existence of cusp forms. But over a number, totally imagine the number of fields, uh, there, there are no cusp forms. Thank you. <laughs>